Welcome back for the chapter on teaching our students to double. It is very critical that we double as saxophonists. There are only very few of us who have made any kind of a living playing only classical saxophone and only one of the saxophones. Uh, this does happen uh, to a few, but usually those are people who are teaching. I don't think that there are many that are actually making a living just playing classical saxophone alto, uh, and that's all they do. Uh, even Eugene Rousseau, who was marvelous at that, taught at a university. A lot of my good friends like Kenneth Che or uh, uh, Tom Liley or uh, uh, even Arnold Bornkamp, all these people who uh, play, but they also teach somewhere because they're really making their living as a teacher uh, and then they play and do some significant things on the side. Claude, Claude Delonga teaches at Paris Conservatory, uh, plays beautifully does concerts and so on, but he, his, his hub is, is his teaching. I think that happens a lot. In fact, I think it's kind of a mistake to think that we should have students just do that one thing. I think we do them a disservice. In a way, what are we doing when we only teach our, sax, our, our, our saxophone players to be classical saxophone players? Really, the best we're doing is just to perpetuate species. Uh, to really make a living, we not only have to be versatile on the various saxophones, but we really need to be able to double on other woodwind instruments. Um, it's critical to be able to play the clarinet and the flute. Uh, it's helpful to be able to play the oboe and the bassoon, and frequently becomes necessary to be able to play recorders, penny whistles, other ethnic flutes, and uh, optional, but even the EWI, the electronic wind instrument, can be of great value. And so this chapter has to do with helping students with those instruments if they'd like to get started. It's not, of course, a full, not a full course on how to become a flutist or how to become an oboist or even how to become a, a, a tenor player if you're an alto player. But I do want to talk a little bit about all those things and at least open the door and give a little bit of help to that. Uh, a couple of stories that I think would be helpful to understand uh, more why we need a double. I rarely get called to just play a saxophone. Once in a while, I do. But most of the time, it's could you bring sax and flute? Or could you bring sax and clarinet? Or could you bring saxophone, flute, clarinet, bass, clarinet? And do you have oboe, English horn? <laughs> and I, I've seriously recorded on everything from piccolo down to, uh, down to the contrabassoon. Uh, it, it just happens. Plus, I've played a lot of EWI, and I've played a lot of uh, penny whistle and recorders and Chinese flutes, and a little bit of kina, a little bit of shakuhachi, uh, a little bit of Native American flute. Uh, so, uh, this chapter deals with that and an illustration of why we need to worry about it. Uh, a few years ago, I had a a call from a contractor saying, help me help me form a saxophone section. Well, it was for a night that I couldn't do it. Uh, most of the best doublers in Utah were contracted that night already by the Utah Symphony to play for the Debbie Boone show. It was December 22nd, and all of a sudden a call from this contractor to contract a saxophone section for Marie Osmond's Christmas show. Well, we had all played on Marie's Christmas album, but back in May, that's when you do Christmas albums. But, uh, and none of us were really available. And so they put together a really fine saxophone section, three of whom were former students of mine and another a, a great colleague. And they uh, called me after the very first rehearsal and said, Ray, they told us to fire the sax section. Said, what? That's a great player. No, they don't have good enough doubles. They've got to have orchestral level doubles was basically what they were saying, which is what they had when they recorded because they had Darren and I and uh, other great players around the area here. But uh, Anyway, uh, I tried to help them put together a section, but it, they ultimately had to hire two fl a separate flute player for the top alto book and so on. It wasn't a happy situation. Uh, three of those, like I say, were the former students that I have tried to light a fire under them for doubling, and they never caught the vision. Now, I have other, other students that have really caught the vision of that that are very fine doublers. And of course, a doubler is a person that plays more than one instrument. 
Uh, so anyway, I think maybe the epitome of doubling is that third book in the West Side Story. Uh, third book is uh, eight instruments. It's a flute, piccolo, clarinet, bass clarinet, oboe, English horn, tenor, and baritone saxophones. And of course, we make extra money when we double. Uh, usually 25% extra for the first extra instrument, and then 10% extra for each instrument after that. So that's like 185% right there on that third book of West Side Story. And those are the kind of things that I've prepared myself to do and that I've done a lot in my life. Anyway, uh, let's assume that we are convinced that we should be able to double. Uh, by the way, I've, I've played a lot of uh, situations too where I have to play more than one saxophone. And I think a lot of us are very much specialized in either alto or tenor, sometimes berry. Uh, I've done situations where I've got to play alto and berry, or I've got to play alto and tenor, or I've got to play soprano, alto, and tenor, sometimes even soprano, alto, tenor, and berry. So let me just make a few notes here on uh, what I would do uh, to try to get into the other saxophones. Let's say that you're a tenor specialist. Well, then how do you get into the alto? You might say, oh, it's a piece of cake. I already know the fingerings. Yep. But that's a small part of the picture. Yeah, the fingers are the same, but that's about the, the end of the similarities. Uh, there are so many differences between alto and tenor, and there are not very many people who play both instruments really well. It takes a dedication there because the tone production, everything feels a little different. Everything's adjusted slightly differently. And uh, I've, <laughs> I was trying to hire a saxophonist for a gig a few years ago, and I called my good friend uh, Joe Muscolino to ask him about a wonderful player in our area at that time, Jan Konopasek. He had played with Thad Jones Mill Lewis Orchestra, played with Woody Herman's band, and he was a Barry specialist, and he played wonderful Barry. But I had a Barry, my brother was playing Barry, so I needed to get a tenor player, and I, had, I needed one more man. And so I called Joe, and I said, what do you think about Jan playing tenor? He said, well, He's not really convincing on the tenor, like he is on the berry and the alto. I thought that was a great way to say that. Are we really convincing as a tenor player, or really convincing as an alto player, or a soprano or baritone? Uh, I play quite a bit of baritone, but I can tell you that I don't feel like I'm as convincing on the baritone as I am on the other instruments. I, I do a lot of stuff on soprano, alto, and tenor, and only a little bit here and there on berry. So, how do we get into the, to a secondary instrument? Well, there's a tendency to say, like I say, I know the fingerings, I know the instrument. No, you know the fingerings, but you don't know the instrument. How do you get to know the instrument? The best thing I can suggest is go to those warm-up studies on the first tone production warm-up page. Play those overtone studies. Play the matching exercise. Play the flexibility studies. Then check your mouthpiece pitch. Work on your mouthpiece pitch. Uh, those are all outlined in the book, and we've talked about them in other videos in the, in the basics section. And if I'm not playing the right mouthpiece pitch, I'm not going to find the right feel for that particular instrument. And it is possible to sound like an alto player playing tenor, or like a tenor player playing alto if you're the opposite specialization. And so I think one of the best things I could recommend is play all the overtone, well, not overtone, warm-up play all the warm-up exercises on the new instrument and test your mouthpiece pitch and do this regularly. And then I think I would uh, suggest get your tuner out and work simple tunes, ballad type tunes, slow melodies, even nursery rhyme tunes and work for intonation on all those intervals on the new instrument. The pitch is one of the big things. Then I'd also suggest Listen to people that play that instrument, that are really specialized in that instrument, develop that real concept of tone, and uh, that will help you as you're practicing, you, you're always weighing against that thing that's in your head, and uh, it'll help you gravitate toward it. Uh, transcribing is a more active form of listening. We've talked quite a bit about listening and transcribing in this uh, book, and that's those are critical. Uh, if you're a doubler, you need to not assume that you just happen to know what the tenor really sounds like just because you play alto. You have to do some specialized listening and imitating, copying in that regard. Uh, reference to that instrument. I would also recommend uh, for playing the different saxophones that you have a, seek an opportunity to play it in different ensemble settings. If you're still a student, 
at high school or the university, try to play secondary instruments in the other ensembles. Uh, for example, well, at my university, I really like to see my students play a different saxophone in our quartets the, uh, each year. It'd be ideal in my mind if each student had at least one semester on soprano, one on alto, one on tenor, and one on baritone during the course of their study, where you're actually playing with other people, having to tune with other people, and gaining the confidence that you really can function on that instrument with other people. And I would say the same thing for flute or clarinet. Play the flute in the concert band, play the clarinet in the concert band, play the clarinet in the orchestra, get those other experiences. Uh, <clears throat> I think that's, uh, that's really important. So. That's just a few words. Uh, I don't want somebody, when I'm playing the tenor, to say, ah, yeah, well, you must be an alto player. I just want to be authentic at whatever I'm doing. So let me move on uh, to doubling on other woodwind instruments. What about the clarinet? 